Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I decided to bring this video where I'm going to be going over a couple interview questions, uh, mainly focused on front end and react. Um, just for those people who um, probably are interviewing right now or have a potential interview, or even those people who just want to learn something new. So um, I have a lot of people who have been requesting this for me, especially because I a couple of my friends are currently interviewing. So I was able to get a, a good glance of the, the, the common interview questions that are asked for react throughout a range of interviews and companies, right? With that in mind, I'll go over more specifically six interview questions, which I feel like every react developer should be prepared for. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. As many of you might know, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning. They have courses on a multitude of topics such as React, TypeScript, Node.js, and much more. A course that I took and I really liked was the Modern CSS Writing Better, Cleaner, More Scalable Code course by Harry Roberts. CSS is definitely one of my weak points in web development, and this course helped me find a better approach to learning the technology. One of the best aspects of Skillshare is that it is curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes so that you can stay focused and learn as many skills as you desire in 2022. The first 1000 of my subscribers that click the link in the description will get a month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is the virtual DOM. So there's a variety of questions that may be asked related to that. And I honestly believe it is one of the most common types of interview questions when talking about react, because the DOM is a very complicated topic. And if you are actually very knowledgeable on the topic, um, it is very common that they will ask something about that for you. If you're very knowledgeable on the topic, then it means that you actually know what you're talking about, and you know how to how to write a react application. And if you're very knowledgeable on the topic, it definitely shows that you you know what you're talking about, right? Another thing I want to point out is that in react, it's kind of hard to test you with code, right? So differently from like solving data structures and algorithm questions, it's kind of hard to know if you actually know how to code a react application, um, they can give you a take home project, which a lot of um, people frown upon because it takes a lot of time for an interview that you don't even know if you're going to pass. Um, so many companies decide that it is better to just um, test people by asking them theoretical questions. And the virtual DOM allows um, the interviewers to um, ask a lot of very specific questions that will definitely be able to differentiate the, the best candidates. So the main question that an interviewer might ask is, what is the virtual DOM? So a quick explanation that I can provide is that um, the virtual DOM is just a concept used in React to provide faster updates on the DOM. So technically, uh, React keeps uh, like a copy a representation of your DOM, which is the doc document object model um, in memory. And uh, whenever there's an update, um, either it be by maybe like a state change or by props or something like that, it will update the virtual DOM and sync it with the real DOM. Now this concept um, prevents uh, that, that's why in react, you can't directly edit the HTML, but it's basically the basis for react, right? It, it, it's, it's something that makes react be what react is. So knowing and getting to understand what the what's the difference between the real DOM and the virtual DOM is really important. Now, the second question is a question that I always ask my friends whenever they're they're going to interview, uh, or, or just people who say that they know react and uh, want my help, because I feel like this is something that um, is very easily uh, mistaken when you're when you're learning, um, you're, you're very easily able to think that you know what it is, but not actually know what it is. And what I'm talking about is what is a state in react. Now I know that sounds simple. And most people who are beginners will say, Oh, I know how I know what is a state, right? I use it all the time. Now, when I ask you to define a state, um, you need to be able to give a very good explanation to why states are necessary. Why don't you just create a normal variable? And a lot of people don't actually know how to answer that. Um, so to provide a, a, a good explanation, in my opinion, of what states are, um, I would say that it's basically a JavaScript variable, which um, whenever its value updates, 
it will trigger a re-render of your React application so that um, it will actually display the new values um, in the UI, right? That's a, a very um, broad explanation, but at the same time, it shows that you know what you're talking about. Now, in normal vanilla JavaScript, if you have a variable and its value changes, uh, in order to see the change of the value in the variable in your actual web page, you would have to add it um, directly, some sort of uh, HTML element um, to represent the new value. So um, that's a big difference from what React is because in React, you can't edit HTML elements. So that's the point of a state. And it's really useful, really important. A lot of people know it, but not a lot of people know how to explain it. Now, the third question comes in many different varieties. Um, and I was personally asked uh, something very similar to this when I was interviewing um, last year. And it is basically anything related to um, explaining or listing the React hooks that are core to React. Now, you guys know that React um, have some built in hooks that are very important. Uh, we just talked about one, which is the use state hook. Um, however, they actually have nine, I believe nine or 10. Uh, and I would say that um, just to be prepared, you should be comfortable um, knowing how to explain and demonstrate um, how to use the following hooks. So I would say the use state hook, the use effect hook, the use context hook, the use ref hook, and probably the, the use memo and the use callback hook. Now, um, it's in order from easier to more complicated ones. Um, however, there's a big chance that they're going to ask you something like, Oh, can you tell me all the hooks that you know? And what exactly do they do? Because um, they're very useful in react and knowing those more complicated hooks will definitely make you stand out compared to other candidates. And as many of you guys know, I actually have a like one hour and a half video uh, just explaining every single hook that is in react. It's like my most successful video of all time. So I won't be explaining them in this video. Um, but if you want to check out just click the card up here and go to that video which I go very in depth on each one of them. Now the fourth question is something that I personally would like to ask if I was interviewing someone. And I was actually also asked that um, previously in my previous interview cycle, this question is really important, because in order to know what how to answer this, you have to be able to have been in a situation where um, you're building a larger scale application, because you won't find the need to know this if you're not building um, more complicated applications. And what I'm talking about is state management in react. Now, a lot of people heard of Redux, and a lot of people heard of the context API. And those are the two main ways to um, manage your states in React. Um, the context API, as many of you guys know, is built into React. So I would definitely say that you're required to know that. Um, Redux, on the other hand, um, not every company uses Redux. So I wouldn't say it's required. But it is highly advisable because um, it is very common. And you might find yourself needing to know that. And what exactly is state management? Um, well, it comes it bo like it boils down to basically thinking about it this way. When you have states, and you have a hierarchy of components, um, and you have to have access to a state from a parent component uh, on a grandchild component, um, the only way to do that is by passing it through the, the child component, so like the middle one. And um, the child component might not even need that state, but it has to, to take in as props so that it passes back down to its child. Um, so that the, ch the grandchild one have access to it. And that is called prop trailing, which I also have a video on. Um, it is a concept that um, makes developers have to learn how to manage their states correctly. The way to solve that is by either using a Redux store or by creating context um, providers using the context API. And this is really important just knowing how to say this because I doubt there's a company out there which won't have a that, that has a project that doesn't manage their states. So getting good at this is is really important in my view. And now the fifth question is kind of specific. Um, I'm I just put this over here because uh, I wasn't asked this, but I, I know a, a good amount of my friends who were asked this. So maybe um, people are asking more of this now. Um, but basically, it is related to hooks. And it is what are the rules that you need to follow when using hooks in react. Now this is pretty simple. Um, there's only two, actually, there's only two that you need to remember. And they're very fundamental to what hooks are and what functional components are. And they are that basically, you should only call hooks on the highest level, like on the top level, which means that um, you should never call hooks inside of functions inside of, um, I don't know, loops or 
if statements, conditionals, whatever, um, you should only call it inside of your component, but above um, all of the, the functions and whatever. And the second rule is that you should only call hooks inside of functional components. So you can't call a hook in a class component because that's that's how it works. It goes against um, what a, what a hook is, right? Hooks were meant to to implement all of the functionalities that class components had um, for functional components. So it wouldn't work in a class component. Now, if you try to do that, you'll find yourself having an error. So it's, it's important just to know those two rules are they're not complicated, and they actually make sense. So that's why I wanted to add those into this video. Now, the last question is actually something that I feel like will be asked no matter which kind of interview you're doing. So if it is front end, if it is re just react, if it is back end, it, it doesn't matter, right? It will be always be asked something like this. And it is, um, what are your views and, and how what do you know about design patterns? Now, the reason why they ask this is because I doubt there's a company out there that doesn't have some sort of standard design pattern for their projects, because or else you shouldn't be working at the company because the code base will be super messy and won't scale well, um, if they hire more employees. Um, so most companies will follow some sort of principle or, or, or guidelines or patterns, um, just so that they are able to organize their code and scale as much as they can. The most common type, for example, is um, the MVC model, which is used like everywhere it's used in front and it's used in back end it's used literally everywhere you learn it at school you learn it um on boot camps on whatever you want and i've been asked in the past about mvc for front end which is kind of crazy so mvc um although i already have a video on vc and if you want to check it out you can just go there um, i'll just give a brief explanation um, it is a design pattern where you divide your your project into um, three components, which is model, views, and controllers. Um, they all have different functionalities. They all have different communication systems, but they all interact with each other in a way so that your code will always be divided in that way, uh, hence making your code more organized. So um, keeping track and understanding this kind of design patterns will demonstrate that you have tried um, to get away from um, the, the beginner stages of a react developer, which is just writing random code and not caring about organization. So being able to do that will definitely make you stand out because it will show that you're organized, it will show that you're prepared, and it will show them that you're seeking more knowledge, although it might not be um, necessary at the moment. So that's basically it. Those are the six interview questions which I wanted to mention. Um, I got them from my personal experience, my friend's experience. Um, I also researched a little bit about um, different people's experience. I looked at Glassdoor to see what people have been asked. And I just wanted to make this video because I know a lot of people go through this and they will always search um, at the title of this video. So if I was able to help you guys, just let me know in the comment and I'll be really happy about it. So this is basically it. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like down below, comment what you wanna see next and subscribe because I'm posting every week and I would massively appreciate it. Again, thank you for Skillshare for uh, supporting the channel and sponsoring this video. And yeah, that's basically it. Really hope you guys enjoyed it and I see you guys next time.